Oh. Ah, there we are. Okay, excellent. Well, good morning. Um, good morning. All right, and Jason's on top of it. He's got the agenda in the chat window, so feel free to pull that up and we'll get things underway here. <clears throat> um, anything need to be added to the agenda before we get started? All right, let's get started. If you have anything to add, uh, we can do that towards the end here. All right, announcements. Uh, Koha Khan website. So it looks like they've got their website up and running. I'm pulling that up as we speak. Oh. That, okay. Using the link that you've got in the agenda doesn't seem to be working. It's actually trying. Oh man. Yeah, it's really slow for me now too. It was working the other day. They have their website up, they're accepting I have it up. Proposals. I used the link yeah. in the agenda and it's up. We're all trying to pull it up at the same time and it's not liking it. <laughs> you need to get a better hamster to run the server. Yes. That's what they need, you know, that little circle that spins around, they need a little hamster running in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting it pulled up, that's weird. Yeah, I think when I looked at it, it was pretty slow to come oh, up. Oh, there it is, okay. Now oh, they've got some fancy stuff going on in it too, that's probably why. Okay. They've got a packed schedule this year too. Their hack fest is r rather long. So they're saying September 10th through 12th and hack fest 14th through 16th. Are they not planning anything on the 13th? Uh, the yes, they are. Day. Yeah, the cultural day. That's what it is. Oh. Okay. So, cool. And yeah, they're still accepting... Uh, talk proposals, aren't they? Yeah, okay. for a while yet, I think. Yeah, but uh, we'll be able to get underway. Man, I hit, I hit proposals and it can't reach it. That's weird. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, submitting one for the author's catalog five years later when it actually works, except you know, maybe I'll have to get it working before then. <laughs> okay. So let me back to my notes here. Okay, I think I may be having an internet issue because I'm just not pulling up much of anything. You know what, Chris? I just experienced that and was able to get in. So it wasn't just it wasn't just Koi US. It was a number of different sites. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, last week, uh, it, pretty much everything I tried to get to was really slow. Once you get in, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like my evening commute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll take a look at that some more later. But that's, we're getting some progress on that. That's great. All right. Um, <clears throat> First thing on the agenda after the Koha Khan website is breaking the Linux barrier. Um, so this is a discussion that, uh, that I've had uh, with some individuals and with the board. Um, one of the things that I think that we're going to need to do as uh, a user group is work on this uh, this uh, barrier that we have. Um, one of the things that I've run into, I don't know if how many of you have actually tried uh, working with um, Koha DevBox. I love Koha DevBox. I, uh, you know, the problem I run into, I, I, I did a presentation at the conference and since then things have just kind of uh, been more difficult uh, 
regarding Koha DevBox, I have not been able to get the thing up and, and running the way I, I used to. Um, the, the challenge for me, you know, I want to get back into to development for, for Koha, and the, the challenge for me is the, the time to go and learn uh, a whole new environment. Uh, Koha is uh, caters mostly to a, a Linux uh, in, environment, uh, and uh, most of us in the library world are probably uh, in the Windows environment. Um, I don't know a lot of libraries, although some libraries are you know, taking on uh, uh, the challenge to, to move into some Linux environments, but most of us are working in a Windows environment. And for me, that, that Linux environment is a barrier between, uh, you know, uh, trying to, you know, between uh, me and trying to, to develop in uh, Koha because Koha works in that, that Linux environment. Um, I want to be there. I, I know that there's probably other people that want to be there. And I know that several of us have uh, fought uh, trying to get up a, an environment on our own, uh, just even a, you know, a, a simple environment, let alone trying to get into an environment where we can actually do some development. And uh, so this is, this is one of the things that I think that Koha US is going to be good for. We're going to, I think we need to work towards uh, educating and, and working out some solutions so that that, that barrier uh, with Linux uh, is broken down so that more people can actually get their hands in Koha. You know, we're a user group and and for, for me, user groups in the past that I've been involved with, they've been involved with the development. They've actually had their hands in the code. They've actually worked on the behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, we can do a lot of the surfacey stuff with jQuery and, and SQL and do some trainings, but I think the real heart uh, of a user group is going to be in, you know, being involved in development. And, you know, not, while not all of us are, are people that know how to do coding, a lot of us need to be involved in, you know, the ideas and the direction that Koha is going. But, you know, that does not mean that we can't encourage people that are, uh, you know, members or people that are part of Koha US to, uh, be involved in development, but we're going to have a hard time doing that if we can't break down that that barrier with Linux. Thoughts on that? Chris, a lot of things come to mind when you say something like that. Um, you know, of course, there's always the opportunity with databases that are available in the libraries. Um, I know with Washoe County, I can go to Linda. Um, and I can take advantage of some of the free uh, databases that are there and go through some training. If I want to do Linux, I haven't looked at Perl. I know they have MySQL, but here again, it's an opportunity for us, even as an organization, if you wanted to buy, let's say, if you're UDMY, Udemy, however you want to pronounce it, um, they have inexpensive classes that we probably could go ahead and purchase for 10 bucks that we've got access to forever and ever. Amen. And um, people that want to do something like that could have instant access. So, you know, we can offer that level of training. Um, allow people to go in and, and, you know, kind of take it upon themselves to get that training. But maybe that too lends itself to something we can do more internally. You know, maybe we can, we can have some kind of a proctor or somebody who is knowledgeable enough or somebody who studies um, a particular part of the course. And then, you know, you've always got access to that person for review. Well, not, not only is, you know, understanding the environment an issue, you know, the, uh, one of my biggest struggles is, you know, every time, you know, there's an update that introduces new wrinkles. Uh, you know, it, ideally it would be, it would be awesome, you know, and I can't say that this is ever going to happen, but ideally it would be awesome if there was like, you know, an environment to log into, you know, an environment that's already ready to go and something that we can log into and, you know, it's, it's, you know, we, we're not touching each other's stuff, but 
um, we have a, an account we can log into and we're in a Linux environment and we can go ahead and start, you know, working on uh, Koha code and we don't have to worry about keeping things updated. It would be nice if, if there was an environment uh, set up for developers to go into to go ahead and, and do that. The sandbox is kind of like that, but not quite. You know, you really can't get, you know, you, the sandbox allows you to test stuff, but it doesn't allow you to go in there and, and really tinker with things. But it's along those lines. I think also if we um, maybe spend a little time and do a little um, soliciting or recruiting from even the, uh, the co-op community, maybe if there's um, a U.S. developer that we could get or a few U.S. developers that we could get to join Koha U.S. and maybe we can add them to our conversations and they can talk to us about that stuff. So when we have those types of questions, we've got somebody that we can source and somebody who can say, well, you know, let me, let me fill you in. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> along the lines with that, uh, well, actually, before I, before I move forward, uh, any other comments? Well, uh, yes, but mine is sort of a, not sure if it's a tangent or a parallel, so. As long as it's not a poem. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I am working on a COA wrap for uh, the Medical Library Association, uh, three minutes of my favorite tool. Uh, I'll inflict that upon you uh, next, <laughs> at the next board meeting when it's, and I hope it's ready. Hey, Fred, what if you came up with a, with a um, song? I mean, I'm trying I'll, to. I'll, I'll, it's like four or five chords and anybody can play along with that. I've been trying to come up with a song. I just haven't had a lot of success. Okay. But um, let's see. Where, uh, I'll uh, see if I can find the couple of verses I've done and read it to you later on in the meeting. Uh, but with this parallel and tangent, and I'm not sure what it is, but I, what I have been concentrating on or think uh, is part of what we should do is get other libraries um, interested in COA. And to that end, you have been going out and talking about the author's catalog, and, and I did it at um, ACRL, um, Medical Library Association, Internet Librarian, and what I, I'm thinking of crossing the Linux barrier as uh, the hardest thing is that command line, because there are not many people around who remember DOS, and this is a lot more complicated than DOS. So, and I'm not sure what to do about it. I mean, you could, could you, can, Koa and while well, all the Linux thing parts of it be configured from a GUI running on the Linux server? I'm not sure. My, my understanding is that Ubuntu offers that. So if you want to configure Koa, at least it was in a version where somebody could go ahead and load it. Now, is there more configuration that's going to be necessary? You're going to have to know the correct URLs. I'm not sure what kind of documentation comes with that, but I think it spins up everything you need within Ubuntu when you go into their package manager. So that's to the extent that I'm aware of. And so should you be able to find that in Debian? Possibly. I haven't even taken a look. But, um, you know, getting into terminal, it takes some exercise and it takes some knowledge. Um, you know, seeding to a particular directory or if you want to, you know, work within uh, a cron job and set something up, knowing something about scripts. I mean, it gets more complicated. Um, but just trying to get to the basics again, you know, there are there are those classes that I think as an organization that we could get and people could go and access. Um, I don't know to the extent uh, of, of what kind of access we can give um, with, a, with a company like UDMY. I'm sure they probably want to make sure anybody who's accessing, we probably need to speak with them and let them know what kind of organization we are. We're a 501c3, so that in and of itself lends quite a bit of um, leverage to the things that we want to do and the kind of education we want to give. But um, yeah, I, we have to we have to kind of point people where to go to get that information and give them proper guidance and direction. Yeah, um, it's been a while since I've installed Ubuntu just from scratch onto a 
computer because lately I've been using DigitalOcean. But when I was playing around with it a couple of versions ago, uh, you could get two versions, the um, server version and the uh, user-friendly version. And the server version was only command line and everybody was saying, oh, no, 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 don't install GUI on a server. It'll take up too much. Uh, There's a lot of overhead in, involved yes, with yeah. it. You can always install, um, you know, you can install a GUI. And yeah, I've got that's kind of fun. I mean, if somebody was to actually record that and show that you're downloading Ubuntu and then you upload Ubuntu and then how you can actually access to links and say, how do I, how do I install the, you know, the user interface and get those instructions and then apply that to the terminal and, you know, then install that. Those are, those are great kind of projects, um, you know, for people to work on. But yeah, it's, it's, it's work. That's, you know, that's why we have companies out there that actually support this stuff so people don't have to worry about it. And I often have to tell people. They say, well, you know, we've been told by the proprietary vendors that, you know, we're going to have to staff up. We're going to have to do this and that. And we don't have the money and the resources. And I tell them, well, you couldn't install Steer C. You can't install, um, you know, any I products. You can't install those products anyways. And even if you could, you wouldn't know how to do it. But this, if you took the time, where you go to the elementary school and you get a sixth grader that's been playing with stuff since he was, you know, five years old, you can get it installed. You know, probably a upper end um, elementary school student or even a middle schooler could come in and install this thing for you. In a lot of cases, but it, it bears, you know, people needing to take time to get educated with it, and then that's why you have somebody like a Bywater that's a resource to get that done. Yeah, my my focus is. Um Places that can't afford that kind of support, but they have more time than money. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, um, the, the challenge with something like a Ubuntu or working with a with a GUI, um, when you start getting into some specialized areas, some things that are you know deviate from what the mainstream is doing, then you start to limit yourself on the support uh, for that. You know, the mainstream focuses on Linux. Uh, um, is it Jesse that, that, that it's primarily the, the environment that the developers are working in? No, um, I forget what the latest environment is. I think Jesse was the previous, and I think they're working in a newer environment right now. As a matter of fact, we had um, Coos, which is a library system, um, a, a consortium that's over on the West Coast in Oregon. Um, they got somebody outside. They just got a new library director, and Jennifer didn't know what she was supposed to do, so she went out and she hired somebody new to go ahead and upgrade Koa and upgrade their um, Linux. So that was kind of interesting for us. You know? um, they found themselves dead in the water. Larry had to jump in, find out what happened. He found out they made an upgrade. Um, you know, was it ready for prime time to take even the next that kind of a jump that they took in that version of Koa to that version of Linux? And we found that, you know, there are going to be some things that we have to work through, but, um, but the, it was okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's becoming less and less. You want to stay with whatever the community standards are. We know where to go and find those. Again, those are more things, resources that we can add to our site um, to make people knowledgeable on how they're doing these things. But um, anyways, I'm, I'm probably going down. I'm digressing here now. Yeah, but you know, it's okay. so was I. <laughs> again, you know, you you know, with so many uh, different flavors of Linux and with uh, different versions of Koha, uh, you know, you've got a lot of combinations going on there. That uh, um, you know, the more that's made available, the more that that's you know active in the Koha community. Uh, it divides everybody, and it makes it diff more difficult to, you know, uh, come alongside. I mean, there are some commonalities, absolutely, but uh, uh, when, you, when you've got somebody working in, you know, a version of Linux that does this or doesn't do this, and, and you know, or a version of Koha that, you know, has different features, then um, it becomes more of a challenge to, to keep up with that support or, or, or uh, you know, where everybody's at, you know, and, and that's, that's one thing that would be, be nice is if, you know, we had some referrals uh, on our website, maybe, you know, we keep a list of, you know, who's running what, you know, you're on Linux, you know, Jesse, and you're, you're running uh, Koha, 
you know, this version, you know, what are the, what are the specifics about your environment so that, you know, if people have questions, they can say, oh, well, this person's doing what I'm doing. Maybe I should reach out to them. That already partially exists. If you go to the, the Koha Wiki and it's got users arranged by continent and then country and state. When I added my entry, I specifically did exactly what you said. So people see I'm running 17.05 on Ubuntu 16.04. And I would, I hoped that maybe others would see that and, and take that and, and do something similar, but nobody that is updating their entries or adding them really apparently seems compelled to want to do the same thing. And I did that for exactly the same reasons you mentioned. So many, there are basically two operating system choices. There are three versions of Koha that are out there, two of which are of course being actively developed in addition to the development thread. And having that information out there, I thought was very important for people to know if they happen to stumble upon what I'm doing here, especially as somebody that's doing it as a standalone site. And we don't, not too many people are like John. But John's evidently, you know, he, he really keeps up on everything. Um, very smart man. So he, he knows where to go find the resources and he knows how to parse through it and find the things that he needs. And that's, for this community, I think at times kind of rare, especially when it comes to making any kind of installation and finding out what's happening with updates and upgrades. Um, except for the people that are on the back and, of course, doing this stuff. But, uh, but you know, I, I hate to, John's already doing so much, but there is, and I'm, I'm pointing this way because, John, you're over there in my window, but you could be anywhere. Um, but, you know, therein lies somebody who can actually kind of get something like this kicked off and maybe give us some guidance on how we want to do it. Chris, between you and with John's knowledge of where to find that stuff, what we're looking for, and how to pull those resources and information in. You know, it's a nice page to start working on, even if we don't present it to anybody, at least get some information on the back end and pull the rest of us in and say, what do you guys think? You know, what else do we need and what else can we plug in? Get us thinking that. We can say, oh, well, you know what, if you have this, or now we start going and we start finding that information and we bring stuff back to you and say, oh, we found this. What do you think about adding that in there at this part? Am I making sense? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Kind of goes along with, uh, you know, one of the, the topics under uh, the um, – this uh, breaking the Linux barrier uh, that I have there, installation instruction sharing. Uh, one of the things that we had talked about at the board meeting is we'd like to uh, develop a, a section on the website um, because you know right now it seems like you know if you want to set up um, you know Koha on your own, uh, you're you know you're pulling from various sources on the internet and really having a time uh, you know putting the pieces together and um, we want to have a, a go-to place for people to say, okay, well, um, this is how we've done it and, you know, maintain your set of guidelines, what, what you went through to get your, your server up and running. Um, we want to post those, you know, those uh, instructions that those people are maintaining on that site so that uh, they have up-to-date information, you know, you know, however, you know, recent, you know, people, you know, updated the information, but they are maintaining a complete set of instructions, you know, from the, um, from the operating system to, you know, getting Koha up and functional. Um, and then, you know, you know, beyond that, you know, we could uh, develop a, a side set of instructions for, you know, uh, development, uh, getting the development environment up and running. So, uh, you know, adding Git and all, all that stuff. So, um, you know, we want, we want to, you know, have a, uh, a single source to run to rather than trying to get all these different resources and all these, you know, little bits and pieces from here and there on the internet. Uh, we want to be able to provide a one-stop shop for, uh, getting up and running so um, that was something that we had discussed yes and I think it's an absolutely marvelous idea and I've been tending I've been intending to write up what I've been doing for oh how long now um, never mind how long and I've <laughs> actually done that um, we talked about this at the board last week I, I got need your email what's that and I got your email on that too I um I've 
been over the course of the past two months since we are about two months out of installation here um i wanted to come up with a document that i could refer to that i could use in the event i had some sort of catastrophic system failure because i don't have anybody but me here and so having just completed that work i came up with something along those lines that talks about and literally tells you what to type character for character instead of saying, well, just do this. No, I, I don't want that. I provided a complete list of instructions that would basically get somebody operational on a 1604 LTS Ubuntu installation. And at the end of this, they would have 1711 running with OPEC over port 80 and the staff side over port 8081. And it represents everything that I did not find when I was doing this work back in 2015. That is to say, one unified document that outlined everything that needed to be done, as well as actually what was being done. Because back at the time, I found four different sets of instructions, all of which did not specify an operating system, all of which did not specify a version of Koha that it was applicable to. And I cobbled these four things together disastrously at first, then finally successfully, and used that as the basis for my installation here in 2016. We are now two years beyond that. Koha is four versions beyond that. The operating system I installed with, the database I installed with, are no longer the supported ones. And so it is my goal here every year or two, especially as the supported operating systems and database systems change, uh, to go in and update those documents and maintain them. The resulting document was shared with the board last week, and Todd, I actually just sent you um, a link to that document as well. And I hope that this is an initial attempt, at least, to provide what Christopher was talking about. Should what I came up with be used as the authoritative source for installing a production level server? Of course not, it is not meant to do that. But if you're looking for something that is meant to get a Koha site operational because you're interested in seeing what it might be able to do for you, then by all means go ahead and take my instructions and see what you can make of them and within 45 minutes, including an operating system install, you too could have your very own Koha server if you've got the right level of permissions within your environment or know how to do enough with a virtual machine environment to get one operational there. Sweet, John, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, having that stuff in a place that's shared and people can get to, you know, not only does it make it easier for you because you're just like, where are my instructions? You know, where to go find them. Uh, but uh, you know everybody else can see them as well you know and the other thing too that that adds to this you know if you put your instructions out there and something has changed and you know you're only updating it every one or two years something's changed for somebody and somebody figures out oh well this needs to happen they can contact you and, and let you know oh this changed and uh, you can it'll be easier for you to keep that updated rather than you know it's just all on you so exactly. That's, and that's kind of what I see this community as being. I mean, we might not be on the leading edge of everything that's happening yet, but as we all start getting more involved and we start exercising, installing Koha ourselves, getting more familiar with SQL, getting more familiar with Perl, you know, understanding how to load Perl modules, what's happening on the back end. Maybe we even offer, you know, an Apache Conf course where people can go in and they can set up their Apache. And, you know, koha-conf.xml, you know, what is that? And, and then, you know, what can we do? What are we looking for in there? And if there is something that, uh, you know, a configuration change that needs to be placed there, if it's going to be a path to a directory or something, how do we want to make those changes? So this is this should be that resource. They, people eventually should be coming to us, and then soon we'll find ourselves knowing more and more, and then beyond the cutting edge of what's going on, and be more engaged even still with the co-op community to where the, you know, the, the high-level community. So we're getting that information firsthand. They're wanting to make sure that we get accurate information, and, uh, you know, we built those relationships. George, I'm going to have you take over for just a minute because uh, somebody was trying to catch me there. I'll, I'll, I saw that. I'll be right back. Um, well, actually, that's a nice interruption because I was going to say I uh, saw John's instructions 
And uh, I went ahead and followed them, uh, not the Ubuntu part, but the uh, Koha part, because I'd have trouble installing uh, when I was doing, wanted to do some testing on 1711. And uh, what occurred to me as I was going through your instructions, John, is that a great way um, to store them and to make them so that it'd be easier for other people to uh, make changes to them would be if they were on uh, GitHub. Oh, okay. And well, the reason that occurred to me is I'm gonna throw a link over here now. Uh, that's the GitHub that I set up to help me manage our uh, consortium's uh, overdue notices and all of the notice templates. Um, this way, you know, we have 51 libraries and I've got all these notices and templates for all of these different uh, locations. And what I did is I came up with a, with a report in Koha where I could output them all of this data into an Excel file and then I could use a macro in Excel to save those all as text files and folders. And um, then I needed a place to store all those where I could track changes to those documents. Um, and so I put them all on GitHub. And this way, if a library contacts me and says, you know, I want to change this notice, and I go ahead and I change it uh, in Koha, and then they write me back a week later and say, it doesn't work right, something's wrong, I've got that record of what it used to be. Or if somebody says, you know, I want that. I want to see what that notice was three years ago. Well, I haven't been doing it for three years, but I want to see, you know, four notices ago. I can go back and I can find that stuff because um, because all of that stuff is saved and get, all of the versions are saved in GitHub. But that's what occurred to me would be a way to to save this kind of data is if you know we've got uh, a GitHub for all of these instructions and it says these are the instructions for this version it's of Ubuntu. And here's the, here's the instructions for how to install that version of Ubuntu. And here's the instructions for how to install Koha in that version of Ubuntu. Um, and then if, you know, in three months, the instructions that you wrote, John, change because there's some new version of Koha or some new version of, of Ubuntu, then whoever wants to make that change can just change the document and push it. And then that way the the, the ver it's just a way of controlling those versions. So, Of course, what this means is that then we would need to offer instructions on how to use GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> then we would need training for how to use GitHub better. So. But you would have to install on GitHub with all the various versions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you don't need to install anything to use GitHub. You can, okay. That's one of the things I like about it is that you can, uh, I mean, it's just a way basically of, um, you know, the, the stuff that I was putting up there was all text files. And so that's one of the reasons I thought of that as an option for using it to track the changes that I make to the notices and stuff um, for our libraries. Um, because it really is easy to go in there and, and view all of those straight on GitHub without having to download anything. But um, well, let me let me ask this. So, if we were to try and move forward with this and try and, and create a repository of uh, uh, instructions for Koha, would somebody somebody out there have? I mean, if we want to pursue something like the the GitHub route, is there somebody out there? And preferably, I'd like to get some members involved that that aren't necessarily the board members. I mean, we've got a lot on our plate that we're trying to to take on, but, um, uh, you know, and if obviously uh, there isn't anybody, you know, we'll, we'll do what we can, but uh, uh, is there anybody out there that would like to take on the challenge of uh, working something out for us to, to um, get us started? What, what, what kind of a librarian? Would this be an archivist? What, what would be required? We, well, you know, and, you know, maybe, you know, not everybody's familiar with GitHub and, you know, maybe we don't start out that way. You know, maybe we start out something simpler. Maybe it's just a wiki. I don't know. Um, but if, you know, if there's somebody that wants to try and take on the, the, the challenge of, you know, creating that you know, or helping us set up an environment that we can uh, 
have people go into and maintain their instructions with. I think, you know, a wiki might be the way to go. I don't know, uh, you know, to start out with before we, we dive into GitHub. And, uh, um, I just, you know, if we could get somebody, you know, that would be willing to put in some <coughs> legwork on it, you know, we, we could even, you know, some of us that do know those environments here on the board, you know, we can help, we can guide them in that. It's just, you know, we, we can't do all of it. Uh, ourselves. We need some other people to do some of the legwork on that. I just pasted a link in that takes you to UDMY so you can get an idea of the price of classes. I think the one that I put in actually is supposed to be for a GitHub free course. Um, it's not showing right up, but I probably have to go through and do a little more looking. And I'm sure really it's just a, it's a marketing Tool just to show you what you can do, but to get a basic understanding. But there are um, there are some GitHub courses. Okay. <coughs> uh, if, we wanted, if we wanted to do something like that, Chris, and if we wanted to do a Koha hyphen US username and Koha hyphen US password. So maybe the folks here in this group can walk away, get a little bit of familiarity, even if it was a if it was a qualified purchase course. I think the master Git and GitHub beginner to expert for fourteen ninety nine. Offer a link on one of our one of our pages. Maybe create a training page. Mm -hmm. Put GitHub there so people can go in and access it. They can take a look. I'm sure there's more than just what I'm bringing up here, but I just tend to default to UDMY because they do such a good job. Again, Linda, you know, I mean, if, if you have that database, even still, I can go into Washoe County and take a look and see if they've got it on Linda. Not that Nancy's going to give everybody access and cards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is this group here? Well, this is the, this is the Kohai U.S. group. All right. Um, yeah. So let's let's look into that. But uh, for now, uh, I will just we're going to leave it uh, you know open. If somebody wants to help uh, uh, further this this project along, we just we just need to uh, organize some information and need some help uh, doing that. So if, if anybody wants to to help uh, take that on, they can talk to me or one of the the board members, and we can go from there. So. Chris, what if we add, Jason, can you add that to next month so people, you know, we have an opportunity to go out and take a look and see what's going to be needed with GitHub and, and you know, give everybody a chance to look at it so we can come back next month and we can ask the same question and see if we can actually get some footing. I'd hate for this to get, you know, just brushed under the carpet and, and then we're having to ask six months from now. I'd rather ask next month than, than two yep. or three months, that's for sure. I made a note to put it on next month's agenda. Sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to. Overstep, I just think it'd be a good thing to bring up again. You're asking some good questions. Nope, here. I want to. I want to keep up on this stuff. So yeah, great. Um, along with this this topic, one of the other things I want to go ahead and move forward on this, so we can get into some of the other topics. But um, one thing that the board had talked about, um, we had this discussion. I've talked with some ind individuals, but uh, um, the board had a discussion, and we uh, um, we want we want to explore. Something. Let me grab what I have here. So, you know, one of the things that would be nice, you know, we, we had talked about this in the past, and you know, I wasn't sure if it was a direction that Koha US wanted to go, uh, simply because we don't, we can't be a support. We can't, we can't put something out there and then, you know, say, you know, we're absolutely here twenty-four-seven uh, to you know, be able to resolve these issues. Um, what we can do is try to come together as a, a community and put something together uh, that is, you know, you know, hopefully reliable uh, to, to as a starting point. But uh, you know, sometimes you know those, you know, getting things underway, getting started with something like you know, setting up an environment and uh, installing you know, your, your Koha uh, might be a little daunting, a little challenging. And so what we were thinking was, you know, 
put together something that might be a little bit uh, less challenging for somebody. Um, I use several of these, but this um, is a, a compute stick. This is a complete computer right here. And all you do is you plug in a keyboard and mouse and, and plug it into a TV with HDMI uh, or a monitor with HDMI and you're up and running as a, with a computer. These come pre-shipped with um, Windows or um, a, a flavor that comes with, uh, I think, Ubuntu. Um, but uh, this costs uh, about $200, somewhere in, the, in that price range. But uh, you have a full functioning computer. Um, let me uh, grab my info here. Now, this particular computer, it's, a, it's an Atom processor, has wireless uh, with Bluetooth, 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, a micro SD card slot, three, uh, excuse me, two gigabytes of DDR3 memory, two USB ports. So, you know, it, it's, it's not a toy. It's, it, uh, it does a good job. I've got, like I said, I've got several displays around here running it. So it, it keeps up with, with graphics and stuff. So it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not a, a, a chintzy little thing. Um, but my thought about this, and this is just, you know, something to talk about and, and, and see if we can put any, uh, steam behind <clears throat> it. But, um, I thought it would be a, a fantastic idea if if we can get to a place where we can set up, uh, you know, an Ubuntu or, you know, whatever operating environment that we need to figure out what will work on something like this, you know, and it doesn't have to be the compute stick. There are other, there are others out there. There are some that have an actual LAN port on it. So you don't have to de depend on Wi-Fi. Um, but it would be great to be able to have something that Koha is installed on and you know, somebody can, you know, you know, foot the bill for just the hardware and, you know, we just copy over the entire environment on there and it's ready to go. All they have to do is plug it in uh, to a, a TV and plug in a keyboard and mouse and turn it on and it's up and running. Not necessarily production, mostly, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, demo or, or, you know, a test environment, uh, you know, to, to begin with. Um, I mean, you know, obviously if you're a small library in a really rural area, maybe it would be sufficient for you, but you know, I don't know how this would do serving, you know, people on the, the internet, but you know, for, you know, a test environment, this would offer something, uh, a little bit more than trying to, you know, find a computer, try to install an operating system and trying to get Koha up and running, you know, dealing with all the, the setup time. Um, so that was something that the board had discussed. And, uh, you know, it'll be something that I, I try to tinker with and see where I can get with it. Um, but I wanted to throw that out there for you guys. If, if anybody is so inspired to try and and uh, do something like this. this. This would be a great direction for us to go. You know, if somebody's interested in Koha, uh, say, okay, well, yeah, if, um, you know, we spent X amount of money on, on a, a computer here. Um, we can send it to you, you know, just go ahead and reimburse us for the hardware and, and we'll send it to you and you can play around with it and, and see what you think about it. I, yeah, I think if we can, we can still add a little a little more to the cost of it, just for for our troubles, and also for um, you know supporting Koha US. I think that'd be great. Chris, where did you get the um, what what did you get that off of Amazon, or where did you get the? Well, this one I actually bought through a a, um, a company that does uh, the digital displays called uh, <clears throat> um, um, oh, what is it called? Now <laughs> it's left me. Um, it is Asus. No, uh, Rise Vision. They have a digital store. They sell different uh, uh, displays, and this is on. This is one of them. And all they do is, you know, this particular one comes preloaded with Windows uh, 10 on it, and uh, they stick their little uh, uh, display software uh, on it as well. And so it's up and running and ready to go. 
but you know they're not they've maybe up the cost maybe 10 bucks uh for it. but uh you know generally the the price of these is is a couple hundred and you can get them you can probably find them on amazon but uh, uh this is an intel product um and like i said there are other products out there i, I did some uh searching around there's some other uh computer sticks out there uh some with uh um uh built-in lands so you can plug plug a physical uh, internet connection to it rather than depend on the Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I like them. I, I've, I've been working with them and, and I've got five of them uh, myself that uh, uh, we're using for displays and, and uh, they work well. I think that would be kind of interesting. Even still, you can experiment at home if you want to plug that directly into your TV and you just want to flip over to that mode so you can do a little playing. Um, yep. What what do they what do they refer to that as? That is uh, compute stick. Compute stick. This is the actual box. So it's the Intel compute stick. Intel compute stick. And like I said, this particular one they 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 come out with two different flavors: the one with Windows and one with I believe Ubuntu. Okay. They're actually prepackaged operating systems on the stick. Boy, you know what would be fun as if we could offer that as an option to people who are going to be coming to the um, Koacon slash Koa US con, and um, let them know that we're going to be offering a course. If we could actually get that drilled down to like four hours. And at the end of those four hours, somebody actually goes to the process of loading Koha on a bunch of, that would be really cool. Yeah. So right now it's it's something I'm tinkering around with, you know. I don't I don't know if I would have anything, uh, you know, with with my time. I don't know if I'll have anything ready to go or not uh, by Kohakon. But you know, I was thinking you know, if I had a functioning um, demo, it would be cool to to show people show off there and, and show us something that you know we're we're doing and, and working on. With John's instructions, I'm kind of curious how quickly we'd be able to put something like that together. You know, just yeah, I will. I will be taking a look at that for sure. Jump right through it, and man, even if, if it was a two-hour group <coughs> offered everybody, look, this is what the cost of this item is, or come with your own. Just make sure you register, so we know who's going to be there, and and we'll walk through this process, and we'll show you guys how to do it, and you can leave with instructions. Yeah, that would be a fun little thing to put on at Kohakon. Yeah. That'd make, us, that'd make us king for a little bit. <laughs> I suggested maybe a digital Pi and just send them the micro SD. So I think the current one only has one gig RAM. So I thought of another idea, uh, which is um, a digital ocean droplet. Uh, you could, we could create an entire system and take a snapshot of it and then offer someone a snapshot of that system, uh, maybe one of the ten dollar a month uh, options, or if they wanted to set up their own account, we just uh, give them or sell them at a nominal fee the snapshot, and they would restore the droplet and have a fully functioning Koa system. Hmm. So there's some good ideas out there. I'm just taking some notes. Yeah, we, I remember we had talked about Raspberry Pi. That was another way to go. It's in my Koa wrap. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any other comments about that before we uh, go on to other topics? Let's go to other topics. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, open discussion, bugs, issues, etc. Um, one of the things that that uh, I have on here, and I think this is uh, uh, a rather urgent matter, at least for us, um, we're seeing a lot of DNS failures on uh, notices going out from Koha uh, on a, on our shared uh, or on our uh, hosted system. Um, I don't know if any of you are on a hosted system, you know, somebody else hosting it for you. Um, but uh, 
we're getting a lot of messages that are bouncing because uh, the reverse DNS is failing. Has anybody else been seeing that? We have one library that had a problem with that on a day that I was sick, and so Robin handled the issue, and I'm not sure how she resolved it. And she's not here today, so I can't walk across the hall and ask her. I was going to say, George, can you just call her over to Robin and ask her to come join us? No, she's out of town today. Okay. Yeah, I wish I had an answer in response for that, too. I know that Earthlink was um, part of the issue. We do have a... Um, you know, we've, we've generated the information that we need so we can put it in a ticket and we can give a response to our partners, but is there more of an issue? And, you know, are you guys identifying this from um, Google? I know that there's been a lot of conversation about, um, you know, AT&T and a couple other. We're, we're seeing this, we, we started seeing this on Earthlink, then it uh, progressed to iCloud, now it's progressed to, to Gmail, NSN, and Hotmail. Um, we're getting, Tons of failures coming in now, and now you know it, it, it's it's to the point where we're feeling a little bit, little bit crippled in notifications because our patrons are not getting the notif notifications that they are relying on that they've come to expect, and uh, um, you know, and it's no fault of Koha, but we're going to have to figure out a whole we're going we're going to have to figure out something in order to get these notifications out to them because. Uh, right now, the security measures on emails are uh, progressing and, you know, uh, getting tighter and the reverse DNS is killing us. We're not, we're not able to get those messages out because they're, they're not seeing it as a, a, a legitimate uh, email at this point. Chris, are you seeing that on both email and SMS? Uh, I've dropped SMS for the time being. We were okay. getting, uh, we were having problems uh, getting uh, consistent uh, SMS. Um, I still have a couple tests I'm doing with Nick to because Lisette, um, Lisette's got uh, like an AT&T account, right? And Lisette, uh, it's working for her on her uh, server. And when we tried to send an SMS message from ours, <coughs> it failed. Um, so using the same phone, she's able to get it through her system, but we are not able to get it through ours. And, um, I'm, I'm going to have to do a test and I, uh, have yet to talk to Lisette about this, but, um, we want to be able to capture that. Uh, we want to see, uh, give them a time frame where an actual message goes through to Lisette through her system and then try it on our system and, and, uh, see the failure and have them compare what's going on on both sides. And let me ask you this, even though it's failing going through, you're getting a, you're, you're getting a bounce there because the reverse DNS, um, nothing triggers, right? You don't, we just lost one, two people. Um, so it's, it's not going over to print notice then, right? When it comes back from reverse DNS, you're just getting a failure message. It doesn't, it doesn't go to print where you're having to print anything out or it's not going to be sent. As far as I know, I, 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 I'm not aware of any, uh, you know, mechanism set up for that. There is an overdue print um, PL. No, uh, if, if it sits in pending, let's say if it fails, um, let's say people have things checked. And this, this isn't the case for you, but just because I'm just curious what you're experiencing. If they don't have an email address or they don't have um, an SMS uh, number that, you know, uh, a message would be sent to and they have selected those. Uh, we have, we have, we have print option. Okay. Uh, you know, so we do print uh, <laughs> notices. But um, yeah, I mean, there, there's no uh, fail safe, unfortunately, with these notifications. So if the people are not getting them through their email, then yeah. they're just not gonna get them. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I was discovering too, I was realizing, hmm, they can't even go online and look at uh, notifications uh, the way that staff can, which is kind of strange, you know? They can't look at the, the messages that tried or uh, tried to go out to them, uh, as far as I can see. Did you what a great idea for a development? Yeah. yeah. Did you add that as a bug, or have you um, put in a ticket to say, "Yo, buy water"? Something I realize it might be advantageous for even our, you know, the patrons is that if they see something went out but they didn't get it, you know, how how can we let them know it's either pending, it's in queue, it's been sent, or it failed? You know. Right. Yeah. I, I haven't done that yet. That was just a thought that crossed my mind the other day. Good idea. But uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up and see if anybody else had been noticing any failures. I don't know how many people are uh, <clears throat> being hosted out there, but um, it's something that we've been running into and, and it's becoming a, um, a critical situation for us. Hey, Joel, are we keeping you up? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me on in a second, dude. Sorry, I'm in. You're in the library? I'm, I'm in a public building and I'm kind of in two different meetings, right? They're both making me tired. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, we're glad you showed up. Shouldn't have mentioned yawning. I was up till way past my bedtime trying to figure out what the problem was with the, uh, uploading mark records. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have to go. Uh, right, see, you, see you later. See you. Hey, Thank you. Um, we're at 1128 and yes. uh, we have to be out of this room at 1130 today. So we got two minutes to wrap it up. Okay. Um, so um, real quick here and then, yeah, let's, let's shut her down. Um, anybody have any uh, um, insights on 1711 so far uh, upgrading or things that they've run into? Nothing that I can bring to you. Just be aware, anybody, um, all Bywater partners, we're going to be doing the um, the town halls. So make sure to watch for the emails with links, and you can come into Zoom sessions, and we can um, keep you apprised of everything that is coming, the changes that are going to be taking place. And You know, uh, Todd, yeah. this is a question that came up at the board meeting the other day. Um, does Bywater allow non-Bywater customers to attend their training sessions, the town halls, the... We don't send anything out to those people. They're just going to be partners. But if somebody gets access, who's to say who can and who can't come? You know what I'm saying? So can they register, though? Um, I don't. It doesn't go against the database to see if you're a partner. Okay. If that helps. Okay. So we'll see you at the meet at the training, John. <laughs> <laughs> We expect to see John. Come on. <laughs> All right, guys. We got to wrap it up here. Uh, Jason, next uh, uh, board and general meetings. Okay. Our next board meeting is uh, May 2nd at 1030 uh, Central Time. And then our next general meeting will be May 9th at 1030 Central Time. All right. Well, that was a packed meeting. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, if you have anything to add for the next uh, meeting, just let Jason know, and he'll put it on the agenda. Otherwise... Uh, we'll hear from you on the listserv or through emails and have a great month. Okay. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye.